This is Tech Years, my name is Levi, and today we're bringing you part two of how good is Sony's clear image zoom? All right, if you haven't checked out part one, we did look at 1080p and how Sony's clear image zoom affects the quality versus the actual focal range. And please click on the link above, check out that video. Uh, I would say just really straightforward. The ZV-E1 and its sensor from the A7S III, the FX3, oversamples 1080, but there was a distinct quality drop when you used Super 35 and or clear image zoom. I think there was a definite quality from the focal range to Super 35 to then using clear image zoom, or if you're using Super 35 or clear image zoom, they were pretty close, but you definitely sensed a quality loss in 1080p. Today we're looking at 4K. Now, 4K on most Sony cameras is downsampled from 6K. So you're really talking about an oversampled image. I actually chose to use the Sony A1. Now, we are going to look at Super 35 and then obviously clear and zoom to see how much of an effect it has. And some cameras, which I did not do a full thorough testing, if I use, say, my R5, the Sony A7R5 and A7CR actually use 6K oversampling in super 35 mode not in full 4k mode it actually does a pixel binning the a1 i'm not sure what it does in its super 35 mode i know in its full 4k it does have a pixel bin but the quality is still very good and i'm not sure what it does in super 35 mode so we're using the a1 but at least that's going to give us a general perspective on the quality of the actual focal range the super 35 and then most importantly what we're trying to find out is that clear image zoom now a big difference you're also going to notice is in 4k the super 30 the clear image zoom only crops in 1.5 times so your 16 to 35 lens at f4 that we're using something like this today that's going to go from a 35 to a 52.5 millimeter when you're looking at super 35 and then from there it's going to take you up to i believe it's like a 77 millimeter when you're using clear image zoom. So hopefully in 4K, because it is oversampling, because they do take the 4K quality, I think a bit more serious than 1080, it should look much better in clear image zoom than it did for 1080. But that's what we're here to find out. So we're gonna go to the studio, we're gonna take a look at the images and we'll find out together and we'll see what's what. All right, so we are back in the office and just on quick inspection, huge difference from 1080 to 4k i'm seeing way more clarity where clear and zoom definitely looks like it's worthwhile uh, let's jump in i'll pause it as needed uh, but we're going to look at this this video is in 4k it's been recorded in 4k it's rendered in 4k hopefully the youtube algorithm doesn't destroy it too much but you guys can look at these uh, video samples and judge for yourself so we are starting off with 35 millimeters in full frame, 4K. That's just shot on an A1. Then we're just looking at Super 35. All right, so we're taking that 35 millimeter, cropping in. It kind of gives you a basic idea of what we're looking at here. Honestly, looks really good. All right, now we're looking at 52 millimeters full frame. So is there going to be a difference on the A9 with Super 35 and full frame? So now we're going to look at a side by side. Let's pause this here for a minute. And yeah, they there's not much quality difference. Maybe one's better over the other. I can't really tell. Uh, the only difference I'm seeing is the 52 millimeter definitely does have a little bit more bokeh just because you are seeing that compression versus the 35 millimeter when you crop in, it's just giving the equivalent of a 52 millimeter. You're not quite getting that compression, uh, but looking at these, image quality is about the same. I'm not gonna say one's better than the other, so at least that's good for the rest of the test going forward. Now we're gonna start looking at some of the clear image zoom and how that compares. Right, so now we have a 78 millimeter equivalent, and we're getting this by jumping in to super 35 from a 35 millimeter, which is 52.5 and the 1.5 X zoom with clear image zoom, giving us a 78.75 millimeter equivalent. So looking at this, 
honestly looks pretty good, like to be frank. <laughs> so it looks pretty sharp. Uh, let's see how the other samples come through. So I do like that footage already off the bat. All right, so now we have 78 millimeters equivalent from a Super 35 in 4K. Now we have 78 millimeters with just clear image zoom in 4K. So all of these are not a true 78 millimeters. They are the equivalent. And I'm gonna pause this here so we can really take a look at it. And if you're looking at this image, I'm gonna freeze frame it so you guys can take a look and judge for yourself. And then you obviously you can play it back if you'd like. And I'm gonna say, uh, potentially the Super 35 does look the best. Honestly, I'm, I'm looking at the clear image zoom with the Super 35 and without. Maybe the clear image zoom without the Super 35 looks a hair better. So that tells me at least on the Sony A1, it might be doing some higher oversampling in Super 35 mode versus in regular 4K. So as I said in the beginning of the video, uh, this is something the A7R5 does and the A7CR do, or the A7R line in general. I think the 3 and the 4 did it as well. They shoot better or sharper 4K in their Super 35 mode. From just these images, I'm seeing that. But the clear image zoom is not a huge leap ahead. All right, so now we're looking at 78 millimeters in full frame. All right, and I got this using the 24 to 105, and I just matched that focal range, since obviously you can't get a 78.75. So I am using the 24 to 105 to get to this focal range, but I'm also gonna be testing the 20 to 70, so I can kind of balance these and kind of see it later on in the test. But I think just looking at this image overall, you're seeing way more bokeh, looks plenty sharp but I do wanna be clear that we are using different lenses here. So let's look at the 78 full frame. And now we're comparing this to the worst possible other outcome, which is a super 35 crop and a clear image zoom. And we're using this from the 16 to 35. So we're jumping all the way up to this. And if we look at both of these, Man, it's, it's close. It's close. Now you can argue the 1635 is potentially a sharper lens than 24 to 105. Uh, but from this, just right off the bat, if I'm using my 16 to 35 and I need to punch in and I need to use clear mid zoom, I am getting near as makes no difference, the exact same sharpness minus obviously the bokeh. All right, that is really impressive. Right now we're looking at a full 105 millimeters from the 20 to 70 at Super 35. So we're looking at 105 millimeters cropped in. Looks pretty good. All right, we're doing using the same 70 millimeter 20 to 70, but now we're using clear image zoom. Again, really close here. All right, then finally, what I did was back down to 52 millimeters, I believe it is, or 50 millimeters, same 20 to 70, cropped in to 75 from the 50, and then the 1.5 to give us the 105 millimeters equivalent. So we're using the same lens here, so maybe this is a little bit more accurate to get to 105 millimeters. And honestly, there's, there's not much here. Like there really isn't. So let's take a look at all three. All right, I'm gonna press pause so you guys can really dive in. And I, I'm, I'm struggling to see any difference outside of, man, maybe a little bit more bokeh on the Super 35, but no, not really. The bokeh is gonna be, yeah, the bokeh is about the same on the first two, because we're at 70 millimeters. And then we're, the last one, because we're at 50 millimeters jump in, you can tell the bokeh is just not as smooth, but sharpness, they are all about the same. I'm super impressed. 
All right, at least from this test, looking at the same lens, same test where we're, we're using Super 35, we're using clear and zoom, or let's say we're using both, you're getting really good quality here. Now, this is 105 millimeters from the 24 to 105. All right, so this is gonna be your full resolution, full 4K, more bokeh, of course, and this is a different lens. So let's see how this compares. And let's pause it here. And I, I would say, again, take into account, potentially the newer lenses are a bit sharper. So your 24 to 105 potentially is not as sharp as the 20 to 70, because right now the 70 millimeter with Super 35 and clear zoom back down to 50 millimeters is about the same. I'm not saying, at least in 4K, huge difference from 1080. Wow, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Like I was not expecting, I was expecting a little bit of a difference, uh, kind of like what we saw in 1080 where you can kind of tell, but it's usable. I'm not really seeing any difference. All right, so here we're gonna be going for max reach. So right now we're using the 20 to 70, super 35 to 105, and then clear and zoom to give us 157 millimeter equivalent. Look sharp. All right. I like it overall. Like, like I said, we've already done this test equivalent. All right. Now we're looking at 105 millimeters with just a super 35. It's the same 157 millimeters. And again, I think we've determined on the A1, it is a hair sharper than even the full resolution if I did bring out a 70 to 200. And I guess and this is the heart of the test. Let me press pause. Same length using clear image zoom on the same lens. And in 4K, it looks amazing. It, it looks amazing. I am shocked. In a good way. This is awesome. Gives me more confidence. All right, let's press pause here, really dive into the details. So we have our first image using 157 millimeters from the 20 to 70. And then our next two images are from the 105. And I'm going to say the 20 to the 70 is a hair sharper or equally as sharp as the Super 35 and the 105. And then the clear image zoom on the 105 is 2% less sharp. You guys, feel free to press pause, take a look at it on your own. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting everything I would want from clear image zoom. That looks impressive. So this was pretty eye-opening. I'm watching this with you guys in full resolution on my 14-inch MacBook Pro M1. So fairly high-resolution screen. I'm not sure what the YouTube compression is going to do, but I am super impressed with what Sony has been doing with their clear image zoom where at least in 4K, not like 1080, and please check that video out, you're really not getting much loss of quality at all. You're getting that additional 1.5X usability, say from a prime. And then on top of that, depending on the camera you have, the Super 35 is potentially better quality if you have something like the A7R5. And then even something where, like if you have an A7 IV, you have Super 35 mode, where you're not getting improved quality, but you're kind of forced to shoot that even if you're shooting 4K 60. So you're still getting really good quality out of that as well. So you have Super 35, you have 1.5X clear mid zoom. And if you're shooting in 4K on those cameras, so generally I do shoot a lot of 1080 for my ZVE-1, for my A7S III, FX3. And then if a client wants 4K, I do an upcharge and I shoot 4K. But if you're shooting a lot of 4K already and you're using those cameras, definitely use your clear image zoom. Take advantage of it. You have your prime, something like a 24 GM 1.4. All of a sudden with Super 35, you're at 36 mil. With a 1.5, you're at 52 or 53 mil, whatever that's going to get. And you have a 24 to 105 equivalent, essentially, like from one lens or at 24 to 50. So maybe you don't need to buy the 24 to 50 
f2.8 zoom from Sony, or if you are considering some of those limited zooms that Sony has released, the 16 to 25 and the 24 to 50, I would say take some pride and know that you're going to be able to extend the reach of those. So now your 16 to 25 is going to go out to 37 mil. And then you add another, what is that, 18.5 to that. And now you're going to be right around that 55 mil. So you have a 16 to 55 mil in 4K really comfortably, I think, and still full high quality, especially a lot of the new Sony lenses are just super sharp, even their zoom lenses. But if you have a prime, yeah, proof is in the pudding. Feel free to go back in the video, press pause, watch it again, come to your own conclusions. Hopefully YouTube does a decent job of rendering this with a compression. I will push this out in 4K, but yeah, hopefully this video is helpful. It was very conclusive for me where I have full confidence where I'm probably not going to use clear image zoom as much in 1080, but I, if I'm in 4K, I will definitely be taking advantage of it and not worrying about any loss of quality, really. This is Levi with Tech Gears. Really appreciate you guys watching. Feel free to uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions. Give a thumbs up and share this video if it helped you.